Welcome back in. We're doing a little bit of this three liter M20 work today. And I kind of want to go over my experience with the intermediate shaft bearings. So this is kind of a crazy thing because I've contacted multiple machine shops and uh, different people that kind of specialize in this. And most of the time they say if they're in good condition, just don't touch them, which at the time this block was machined, the machine shop, being that you usually change out every bearing, they knocked out the bearings just to do all the cleaning and everything. And I was kind of left with no choice but to, to work on them. Well, when you buy them from BMW, they're oversized. So you have to cut them back down. And I ran into a bunch of different issues with this. According to some really professional machine shops that I work with, really the best way to do this is to put this in a lathe or in a mill and use a single tooth carbide cutter and like you dial in on this and you would cut them. So you would cut them straight. And the problem is also is these are two different sizes. So that guy is smaller than this front one. So if you look right here, um, you can kind of see it here. This is a larger diameter than this. So it's a pain because you can't just set up two bearings and and do it you'd have to set this up twice so it'd be like two completely separate operations you couldn't just go through and then hit the next one if you were boring them so it caused me a lot of trouble and i just wanted to see if i could make it a little easier on other people so essentially um, if you're doing it at home the best way that i've found to do this and once again the correct way i think is the carbide cutter from machinists that i talked to However, even BMW says to use a... So basically, all you can do is use a hone. Now, I had a hone, I had this guy, and I quickly realized testing with it that this is absolutely not the tool to use. A lot of people that are familiar will be like, duh, that's no brainer. But the problem with these is they do not track true in... Uh, like a bearing. So if you go, if you just take this thing and run it in and out, you'll just round off every single thing because this just follows all the contours. This is great if you're just trying to clean up a bore that's already machined and you're just like you're doing a touch up. So like they'll use these on like if you're doing a quick rebuild on an engine just to, to take off like deglaze your cylinder walls, you can use that. Um, but it doesn't, it'll, if the cylinder wall is like really egg shaped or problematic, this won't won't straighten it. Um, you got to use one of these. So this is from, uh, I can't remember what brand. I'll have to go look it up for you guys. I think I got this um, on Amazon for like 30 bucks. Uh, the Leslie or something like that is what makes these. And they have three stones. They have a uh, kind of a tensioned rod here. So you can adjust these to different size uh, bores. So basically you'll take that, you'll take a drill and you'll just go in here and you absolutely start with it oiled. So you'll take some oil, oil the stones, put a little oil on the bearings and then try to keep it as true as you can and try to keep these stones centered. So where the center of the, of the pivot is, try to keep it um, centered as much as you can. And then you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth checking it periodically. It does take a little bit of time to do this, but let me see if I can get you a little better picture here. Um, it does turn out really well. Um, I've just measured this one up and it was like 1.9 thousandths at the back half and 2.1 at the front. So there is a little bit of a taper, but that's something I can't really avoid without the absolute best, you know, pro machine shop uh, set up and actually rigging this thing up. The back one is a little bit better. It's actually closer to like, um, it's like 1.9 and two. So it did work. And uh, I don't know, this was just something that has caused me a ton of grief. Like I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the best route. These bearings are from BMW, you can still get them. They're about 40 bucks each. So 
messing them up is not advantageous. It just costs money. And uh, so I'm hoping I can save you guys from some of those mistakes. Um, the way I check them is just kind of the standard way you, that you check a bearing. You take a mic an outside micrometer just like this and uh, you put it on the outside make sure it's centered nice and snug click it down and then you take your uh, dial bore gauge your cylinder gauge set it in there zero it out so you're taking a relative measurement so whatever this whatever the diameter of this is the OD is what I'm setting this to and then this, once we zero this out, that's just telling us how close the OD of this bearing is to the OD of, or sorry, the IED of the bearing, so the inner diameter, to the OD of this intermediate shaft. And that's where you that's where you get your tolerance. So you'll see this thing; it'll it'll swing back and forth. Like when I'm trying to get you know close to two thousandths of an inch, it'll come out here, and I'll just and you try to just keep this centered as possible and you basically just rock it back and forth a little bit until you get your lowest or largest reading. You'll just see it stop every time it hits that uh, largest portion of that. So anyway, this, I, I won't go into detail. I actually have another video on kind of how I do this and there's a lot of other really good videos on how to measure. Um, I'm not a professional, but I know how to do this. I've been doing it for a little while. So that's just my method that I go about. And Yes, uh, I still think if you need these, you can get them from BMW. I threw mine on the lathe and lightened it just slightly, just for fun. I just had a, a lathe available to me, so I just lightened it up. And um, everything else is good. This guy fits in there and spins nice and freely now. Just make sure you keep that thing uh, well oiled. Just oil it up with some really thick oil, or if you have engine assembly, grease grease this thing up before you put it in it's going to be dry for a second when you first start cranking and since there's tension on the belt and everything you want that to be protected especially until it gets oil pressure so anyway uh, i have i had a whole other bunch of videos that i was going to make on this um, of me actually drilling it out but i got so tied up in the frustration of of everything that I was working on that I just figured I'd do like kind of an aftermath. But if you're looking to do this, um, it actually isn't too difficult. Hopefully it works really well. This is, uh, you know, yet to go fully together, but I do have them within the factory spec. I think factory spec on both of them is um, anywhere from 1.5 uh, thousandths to 2.5 thousandths. So kind of like a standard bearing. A lot of the bearings like main caps and rod journals are that same spec. So anyway, hopefully this helps someone out. Um, I'll throw this thing in the description. Works well enough for me. Uh, it's basically the same that you would use for like a brake cylinder. So if you're honing a brake cylinder to rebuild it, uh, that's what this is, the brake cylinder hone. Don't use the dingle ball uh, brush type of hones. So anyway, hope that helps. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Hopefully you guys can see some more progress on the three liter and it's uh, M20 here coming together soon. And as a bonus, we've actually got another one of these. Um, a good friend of mine had a block. I already had the crank and everything. And so we may be building that uh, very inexpensive budget style M20 as well for you in the future. So thanks guys. Take care.